Welcome to my gaming PC guide for 2014. Um, this build is going to include components which have been tried and tested by myself or come with a good reputation. This is certainly not going to be a budget PC but at the same time it's not going to be an ultra machine. It's going to offer you good performance at a very good price point. So let's get things kicked off with the case. So here we have the Corsair 200R, this is their carbide series. It's a particularly good case, Corsair always make very good high quality cases. And in my opinion, when you're picking a case, make sure you pick a case that's going to last you at least four years. This will certainly do the job. On the front, we've got two USB ports, a USB 3, and you've got your typical input and output for a microphone and headphone. Internally, it will hold four hard drives. It's also got support for uh, SSD as well. And it's just generally a very good, neat little package that's going to make your PC look really nice. Onto the motherboard, and this is the Gigabyte GA Z87 HD3. I'm not going to bore you with all the tech specs, but on the back, we basically got your audio outputs, your Ethernet connector, four USB, HDMI, DVI, VGA, two USB, and if you are still using the old keyboard mouse combos, then it's got a PS2 port as well. I'm sure you're not, though. It'll hold up to 32 gig RAM, and this is going to be an ideal motherboard for our gaming PC. Onto the processor, and this is the Intel i5 processor. This is the 4670K. This is easily clockable to 4.5 GHz. Now, some might be debating why didn't I put the i7 in. Well, there aren't really that many games that utilize eight cores, which is what the i7 has. The i5 only has four cores, and as this is clockable to 4.5 GHz, that's plenty good enough for today's games, and probably games that are gonna come out in 2014. We've also gotta bear in mind that we're trying to keep this build at a fairly reasonable price point. Next up, we've got the power supply from Corsair, which is the CX600M. It's a 600 watt modular power supply system, and it's going to keep the case nice and tidy because we only need to connect the cables up that we need. So for your storage, we're going to offer two types here. This is the Plexter PX128M5S. This is what I'm going to recommend you install Windows on. It'll be very, very quick. Plexter have got a great reputation in the solid state market, and they offer a comprehensive warranty of three years as well. For your storage and your games, I'm going to recommend the Seagate 2TB drive, which is the ST2000DM001 Barracuda. Who the hell comes up with these names? That's huge. Anyway, it's going to be a great drive and ideal for your games and media. So moving on to the memory, this is the Corsair, another Corsair product. I'm not a Corsair fan, but honestly, but this is the Corsair Vengeance low profile 8GB RAM. 8GB is probably still the sweet point for gaming and there isn't really any need for 16GB. And at the heart of any decent gaming machine, of course, is a graphics card. And this is the EVGA GTX 770 Superclocked Edition with the ACX cooler, which has been designed by EVGA. This is the 2 gig model, and this is a beautiful looking card. EVGA offer very good warranty, very good service and support. And if you are unlucky enough for a graphics card to go wrong, they do a very good job at turning things around very quickly. This is going to finish off your machine nicely. All the components used in this build will be down in the description bar, so you can add that to a basket for your local area and then try and work out how much it costs. In the UK, this comes to around £850. Please don't ask me to calculate how much it will cost in your country. Just work it out for yourself. Just go to Amazon or your local retailer and work it out. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. And if you did, please hit me up with a like as it really helps me out. And if you liked it that much, please hit me up with a subscribe. So until next time, I'll catch you later.